And now, our feature presentation. So is this a worthless whip? Well, yes. Although it did cost me a lot more than the majority of the cars that we buy on the channel, this is not considered to be a very valuable car by most people, but to me, it is a dream car. It's one of those, I wouldn't say it's my number one dream car. My number one dream car has always been a 1971 Plymouth Cuda, but this is one of those may as well be on the top of my list. Anyway, let's give this thing a once-over. I'm going to have to reverse it a little bit so we can get some uh, space to work in the front. Um, and you and I are going to discover this. I'm going to get Dr. Milk on the line so that we can uh, report as to what's wrong. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be great. Hey, is that Dr. Milk? Yeah. Uh, I just bought myself a, a Firebird and I need uh, your help here. We need to make a diagnosis. A Firebird? Dude, you're alone on this one. Well, thanks. I guess I'm on my own then. There's a reason for that though. Um, you see, the first thing I did when I, when I got the car is I took it in for a smoke test because obviously I want to get the car registered and on the road and all legal and everything. So first order of the day, took it in for a smoke test and they discovered that there is no catalytic converter on the car. It's quite a common modification for people that don't live in California. Take off the catalytic converter, you get a better exhaust sound and you also get better flow, so you get better performance. But that's not good in my case because I need that. So I've ordered a new one. So that's something I know is definitely on the list. There's also an error code coming out of the engine. And um, I figured it out that it's got something to do with the vehicle speed sensor on the transmission. So that's something I'm going to look at later. But let's first have an overall look at the car. Let's see if we can spot anything that's wrong. Okay, let's get this open. And of course the uh, struts are gone. There we go, that's fixed the problem. Now let's take a quick look underneath the hood. This hood liner obviously needs to be replaced. I wonder if it's even the correct one. E either way. What I'm going to have to do with this is, when I do the, the scoop, the air intake scoop, I'll take another look at this and think if I can replace it or what the deal is, but I'll leave it for now. Here we can see some of the wiring for this piece of crap aftermarket alarm that's giving me so much issues. I mean, why is it that they can never even just mount... You know what, that's... Ugh. I hate this crap. It means they've spliced into the original wiring loom and messed with it and I mean come on guys why would you do that anyway it is what it is uh, everything else though other than that does seem at least appears to be stock which is great we've got um, got a loose battery that's no good I'm gonna need to get one of those battery mounting blocks that are supposed to be in there no idea what these random bits and pieces are. Um, I did notice something though, there's definitely a leak. Some kind of a leak, and I think it's coming from here. Let's see. This is a coolant leak, and that coolant looks horrible. It's all um, corroded. And if I'm correct, it's coming from this budged, yep, 
There we go. Someone has used epoxy to try and fix this uh, coolant tank. You know what? These things are so cheap. And this is America. You can just buy these from like any automotive shop. I'm just going to replace it. There's no point in me trying to fix that. And then when I get the replacement part, I can pull that off, clean all that disgusting overflow crap there. And uh, I, I, I need to flush the radiator anyway. So we'll make a video about that. For those of you who are curious, this is actually fuel injected. There's like a a weird little hybrid, looks like a carburetor with two two fuel injectors in it. It's it's a really dumb system, but you know what, it works. And I'm not out to uh, make this into like a super hot rod or anything, but I'm gonna do my best to make that system as powerful and efficient as I can, including burning a new ECU chip, cleaning that thing out, modifying it, doing all the tricks, putting that cold air intake, all that. So we'll see what I can get out of this this thing in the end. I mean, at the end of the day, performance is not what I'm after here. It's got to sound good, it's got to look good, and it's got to drive well and be fun to drive. Probably a good idea to get new spark plug cables. Those look very shit. They look, they look horrible. Looks like they've been sprayed on. Which is unfortunate. That means that there has been some, some uh, paint repair on this. And you can see sort of like evidence of it all over the place. I guess the hood was resprayed or something because like this is not factory paint here for sure. And bear in mind this came from a, one of those snow climates so never know what kind of dodgy repairs I'm gonna find but this was sprayed too. And I wonder if there was an accident. Wouldn't surprise me. Old cars you never know their secrets till you dig into them and you can do a Carfax but it doesn't really help. I'll find out as I take that fender off and stuff later. But I'm committed to this car, so it's not the end of the world, you know. This has also been resprayed, so I'm guessing that's why it sags a little bit and the hood doesn't line up properly. Probably something to do with the fact that this has all been replaced. Anyway. Uh, th these are the basic things that I've taken a look at. Let's take a look on the inside of the car and the interior. Let's see what we can see there. Okay, now that we're in the car, let's discuss what I have discovered. Because obviously I did drive this and when I drive a car I try and test everything that I can. The interior is in fantastic condition. The seats, except for some tears on the top there, which I don't know what I'm going to do about. But uh, the seats are actually in great condition. All the plastics and things, the dash, except for one crack up there near the speaker grill. It's all good. This is saggy and crap, so I'm either going to replace it. This is like a... It's like a map holder. It's an excuse for a for a glove box or a cubby hole. <laughs> it's absolute nonsense, but I'll probably replace that. Um, I had to read the code, so I took some of the paneling off down there. And I'll tell you what, it's a bit scary what's going on in there. Um, it's all that aftermarket alarm crap is in there. See, this light's off. This worries me, you know? Like, I wonder if it's even going to start. Um, T-tops are great, T-tops come off. This mirror's got that weird like corrosion inside, oxidation or whatever, that's not ideal, but I'll live with it. Uh, the radio doesn't work. That is so disappointing to me, because one of the things I love about these cars is the vacuum fluorescent display over here. Um, it seems like it could just be capacitors though, so I'll prob probably be taking that out and either trying to repair it myself or I'll send it in to get fixed if it's beyond me. But I think just soldering in a few new capacitors should fix that. So that's all that. Otherwise, like I said, the interior is in great shape. So radio does, doesn't work, air conditioning does work. I've tested it, both heater and air AC both work fine. Um, lights, pop-up lights work. There we are. They're incredibly noisy though. I'm gonna have to, I don't know, use grease or oil or something, hopefully fix that. Um, the electric windows, although they work, obviously I need to turn the car on, but they're incredibly slow. So I guess I need to go and open up the doors and lube everything up and everything and hopefully that fixes it. This one even has, believe it or not, can you see that? Cup holders. <laughs> I got cup holders. That's something I don't really have in my other cars. So that's a great thing. 
Um, the hatch release thing works intermittently. Let's see. Oh, now it works. Yeah. See that bloody alarm shit going off there? I really hate it. Oh yeah, see this? This is quite common. So the horn doesn't work because it's all peeled off and it doesn't matter how hard you press there. Even when the car's running, I tried, you can't get it to like honk. Again, there's like some weird little button hanging out here, which I don't know what that, like some shitty cable. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's all part of this crappy aftermarket alarm, which definitely has to go. Get access to your rear seat, which, look, let me demonstrate this to you. I can barely fit my fist there. I don't know how anyone's supposed to sit here. I'll try. Oops. Okay, so, oh shit, I can't even get my feet in there. Okay, I got my feet in there. I guess if you sit splayed leg like this, wow, that's pretty rough. And uh, now I'm back here, I'm seeing some panels that aren't properly attached. You know what, it's still, overall is in very good condition compared to most of the ones you find out there. It took me a long time to find this particular one that kind of met all the criteria. So I'm happy I've got a good starting point, but there's a long road ahead before this thing is, uh, you know, before this thing turns into my ideal dream car. But hey, at least it's manual. All right, so I've got my basic checklist of what I need to do. Most importantly, I have to, of course, while I'm stuck back here, I may as well talk to you guys like this. My main thing is that I'm going to have to get this thing smogged and registered. Once that's done, I can start tearing it apart, changing everything, making it all up to 100% spec, or at least in fantastic condition. I'm gonna make it faster, I'm going to make it more fuel efficient, I'm going to make it better in every way. I'm gonna redo the suspension, lower it just a little bit so it's tasteful and it doesn't look like um, a boy racer or something. Uh, trying to do tuner stuff to an American car. It's got to have that perfect V8 note to it, you know? It's a lot of stuff I'm going to do, and I'm excited. In the next episode of The Formula to Happiness, we're going to find out that this car has a lot more nasty secrets than I first thought. And we're also going to take it through a car wash and see if those T-tops can actually hold water. So until next time, you know the drill. Stay awesome.